Mastering Carb Counting, Essential Guide for Type 1 Diabetes Management. Welcome back to our channel. So, let me ask you a question. What is an important tool at every diabetic's fingertip that is not complicated to use and yet totally free? Answer, the ability to count carbs. Controlling blood sugar with carbohydrate counting, also known as carb counting, is a crucial skill for individuals with diabetes, especially those who manage their condition with insulin or other medications that affect blood sugar levels. Carb counting involves tracking the amount of carbohydrates in the foods you eat and then adjusting your insulin or medication dosage accordingly. Here's how you can effectively use carb counting to manage your blood sugar. Learn to identify carbohydrate sources. Carbohydrates are found in various foods, including bread, rice, pasta, cereals, fruits, vegetables, dairy products, legumes, and sweets. Familiarize yourself with common carbohydrate-rich foods and their portion sizes. Read nutrition labels. Nutrition labels on packaged foods provide information about the total carbohydrates per serving. Pay attention to the serving size, as it can significantly affect your carb intake. Measuring cups, kitchen scales, and other tools can help you accurately determine the portion sizes of foods. Calculate total carbohydrates, ha? Huh? Well while you ponder this, can you hit the like and subscribe button for me? Your support is a tremendous help to this channel and helps us to determine future subject matter to share with our audience around the world. Thanks, I knew we could count on you. Add up the total carbohydrates in your meal by summing the carbs from each food item. Include beverages and condiments like sauces or dressings, as they can contain carbohydrates too. Here is a tip I use. When shopping I usually check every product box or can to see how many carbs the product contains. As an example, if we are cooking spaghetti, rather than just looking at the back of the box, I'll measure how many cups of pasta I'm using and simply Google the information on my phone. Totally quick and easy. If it's way more than my established carb level that my doctor came up with, I'll adjust the amount. Now remember, every person is different, so work this target out with your doctor. For me, my team suggested I keep each meal to 50 carbs or less. Again, for me, this has worked pretty well. Along with reading labels on foods, I will Google the carb information or use an app on my phone such as Calorie King to estimate carbs each meal. There are many free carb counting apps available on your phone if you don't wish to read labels. Fiber is a type of carbohydrate that does not significantly raise blood sugar levels. Subtracting fiber from the total carb count can give you a more accurate estimate of how carbs will affect your blood sugar. Account for sugar alcohols. Some sugar-free products contain sugar alcohols, which may affect blood sugar to varying degrees. Consult your healthcare team on how to handle these in your carb counting. Use Glycemic Index GI. The Glycemic Index ranks foods based on their impact on blood sugar levels. Foods with a low GI raise blood sugar more slowly than those with a high GI. Consider this when planning meals. Monitor blood sugar levels. Regularly check your blood sugar levels to assess how different foods and meals affect your body. Adjust your carb counting and insulin doses based on these readings. Work with a dietitian. A registered dietitian or certified diabetes educator can help you create a personalized carb counting plan and provide guidance on managing your blood sugar effectively. Practice consistency. Consistency in meal timing and carb intake helps stabilize blood sugar levels. Create a meal plan and try to stick to it to reduce unexpected blood sugar fluctuations. Listen, I understand everyone is busy and sometimes you eat on the fly, so it's not always easy to predict your week and what you will eat. You always have your phone app and can quickly count up your carbs in your head before you make your meal choice. This seems complicated at first, but it's really easy with technology today. Adjust insulin or medication. Consult your healthcare provider to determine the appropriate insulin or medication dosage based on your carb counting and blood sugar monitoring. Talk to your doctor about the amount of insulin you take after each meal. I hate to give examples of my practices because I don't want anyone copying me. My circumstances are unique to me, so please speak to your doctor and they can show you how many units of insulin and what type to take after a meal. I know you can do this. I will tell you this. What I learned early on is to take my insulin right after I eat. This way it goes to work right away and my blood sugar has less chance of spiking to 250 mgdl for example. I just had lunch this day and calculated my carbohydrates at about 55 carbs. 
I was working from home so my insulin is right here in the refrigerator so I took my dosage right after eating. Happily, 2 hours later my glucose is at 112 mgdl. So that's perfect. By midday, I know so far today has been a great day for keeping on target. Stay up to date with the latest information and guidelines for diabetes management to make informed decisions about your diet and lifestyle. Remember that carb counting is a skill that takes practice, and it may require some trial and error to find the right balance for your unique needs. Regular communication with your healthcare team is essential for successful blood sugar management. I hope you got something from today's video. Counting carbs is a simple but very effective tool to help manage your blood sugars. With some practice, you will find this is a very effective way to combat this diabetic war on a daily basis and you will be the winner. Thanks for watching and we will talk again soon.